Often I think we overlook the most obvious areas in our lives where clutter is piling up because we get used to them. Food is one of those areas in our homes that we often overlook that can be a huge source of stress. The good news is that the food in our homes is a great place to start if you're new to minimalism because none of it is sentimental. The part that's a little more difficult is the emotions that often get tangled up for us in food. Food that's trash is better in the landfill than sitting in our fridge. Obviously, I recommend composting if you have the space and the ability for that. I am a really big fan of composting, especially because we do so much gardening. If you want to look into that as an alternative to throwing certain food items away, I will leave the link for that. There are certainly cases where food that's not expired can be given to a homeless shelter or a church ministry or even a neighbor, but let's just hold that thought. By procrastinating taking action on throwing food away that we're never gonna eat, we are putting off confronting the emotions that are tangled up in that food item. I can say from experience that I am much better off confronting the difficult emotion, as silly as this sounds, that is stored up in that food item, accepting it and the fact that the person I am today doesn't feel like eating that food anymore and letting it go. And by that, I mean throwing it away. I wanna reiterate that because some things just can't be sold or given away. They really are trash and need to go in the trash can. Your home is not a trash can. Your pantry is not a trash can. Your fridge is not a trash can. They are better off in the landfill. By getting my pantry and my fridge in order, I no longer purchase, okay, I should say, I no longer purchase as many impulse food items that go to waste. And for the most part, we don't waste food anymore like we used to. We eat it, and that's because our fridge and pantry is clean, it's decluttered, it inspires me to cook. And when there is waste, I get to learn that maybe we just don't like that food as much as I thought we did, or in that quantity. Often I think when we're shopping for food, uh, at least I get a little bit of a fantasy self. We see a head of kale, and no hate towards kale, because I like kale actually. We'll just go with it. We see kale and we think, we should eat more greens. My kids should eat more greens. And even though we have no recipe in mind, we buy it, and lo and behold, it goes to waste. And then we're bummed that both we wasted the money and the kale and let's again you compost but more than that you have the difficult task of once again and this comes up constantly when you're decluttering and minimizing and that is accepting yourself as you are right now today trusting yourself and living fully into that at its core to me minimalism is stripping away all the excess that we're hiding behind, coping with, covering ourselves under, accepting ourselves as we are. Eating and drinking, and therefore taking ingredients and cooking them, is at its core what it means to be human. I read recently that studies now show that the happiest people ever are is eating together around a table with family and friends. Preferably outside. There's a show that I used to watch on Netflix. I haven't in about five years because that's how old my oldest child is. Huge fan of Chef's Table. And what I noticed about all really great chefs is they keep a meticulously clean kitchen. They treat their workspace and their ingredients, even down to like the gardens that they're grown in, they treat them with so much respect. I think it's also important to note, since I talk about minimalism and slow living, that the slow living movement began when an Italian activist protested the opening of a McDonald's in Rome and founded the slow food movement, which celebrates culinary traditions that are passed down through local families generationally. It celebrates small organic farming and it encourages people to garden to buy locally so let's start enjoying the process of keeping cooking and eating our food again let's delight in the beauty of food and get back to our true selves let's feel what it feels like to be hungry and full when we can clear out the clutter both physical and emotional around food we allow space to be truly filled again 
Not only that, but we save money on duplicate purchasing due to lack of organization, repurchasing foods that continually go to waste, or money on restaurants because we aren't cooking at home as much as we'd like to. When you cook at home and share that food around the table with other people, I'm not talking about entertaining. I'm talking about the intimate experience of sharing a simple meal together not impressing people with your home and the food and all of that. Just the unique human experience that is preparing simple food and enjoying it together with other people. It's nearly summer at the time of filming this, which means that there is no better time to give your pantry a good, deep spring clean, clear out the junk and refresh. I have a Pinterest board that is strictly dedicated to inspiration for slow food and feasting. So if you want some inspiration, I will link that in the description below this video. And let me know in the comments how your pantry decluttering went or is going. And now let me show you around our pantry so that you can get a idea of what a minimalist keeps in their pantry and fridge. Starting at the top shelf, I keep some three and a half gallon bulk bins and just a ton of oats, a couple different varieties of beans. I am obsessed, so is my whole family, with making homemade refried beans. Pinto beans are a necessity, but I feel like we might change out the chickpeas anyway, not to spend too much time talking about beans. That's what's in those bulk bins. I also have more bulk bins down here with flour, just organic einkorn flour for my sourdough. This one's still empty, so TBD on that. And then I've got some organic jasmine rice. Actually, it's not organic. I just got a um, shipment from Azure Standard and I accidentally didn't get organic, but I'm trying to be chill about it. Here's my cleaning supplies up here. I've got vinegar and then just, you know, dishwasher stuff. In here, I have garbanzo beans. I'm trying to get away from using things with like aluminum can coating, but at the same time, it's so nice to just have some beans on hand. Coconut milk, coconut water, we're running a little low on that. Um, actually charcoal is just something that's for us is like so necessary to have on hand you can use it to whiten your teeth you can also use it like if for whatever reason in fact we use it this morning as our dog accidentally ate a chocolate chip so I gave her this <laughs> with her food and uh, she seems fine anyway we've had so many different situations where it's just like great to have a little charcoal in our pantry some golden milk this is just our first aid and like a little bit of our supplements area up here. One thing to be cautious of with supplements is just not to like hoard them for what if. I find that like I have a Sprouts down the street and I have Amazon and I don't need to have a big inventory of stuff. This is the stuff I'd like to keep on hand, but if something comes up and I need to go get stuff, I can do that at Sprouts. I don't need to keep it all in here. And in fact, I just threw out some supplements. I might also throw out this one. I know that seems wasteful, but the fact is I just haven't taken it in the last 90 days. That one might go and that happens, um, especially with stuff like supplements. So that's an area, that and essential oils that you can really start to hoard. And I'm fine with whatever you wanna make stockpiles of that you feel is necessary and important for your family, but it can get to be quite a burden very quickly. Collection of homeopathy stuff. On this shelf, we have quite a lot of honey from Maui that we brought with the pack with us. And then I just have all my like bulk dry goods. I have quinoa, some cannellini beans, our nutritional yeast, um, hemp hearts, chia seeds, Brazil nuts, um, red raspberry leaves and that looks like brown sugar. And then I always have some pasta sauce. This is a spot where I usually keep some snacks for the kids. Obviously my preference is that they eat like whole foods out of the fridge or you know, produce, fruit, stuff like that. But I do always keep like some crackers and stuff they can just grab in there. Down here I have black beans and red lentils, chamomile. So many great uses in the home for chamomile. We have used it for pink eye with miraculous results. And our kids love chamomile tea, like before bed. And we use a lot of chamomile tea. I've got cacao powder, um, organic cane sugar. And then back here is my ground up oats for oat milk. Lots of different kinds of potatoes, because we eat lots of those. My flour, and then up here is our bread shelf, but 
typical we've eaten it all. This is my tea shelf to organize all my teas in. So that's where that lives. And then up here is pasta. This is all pasta. We love pasta. And this is just all my baking goods, like miscellaneous baking goods, coconut, um, what is this? kelp. <laughs> all those little baggies fit perfectly in a basket like that. And you can see we haven't updated our calendar in a while. And that's pretty much it for our pantry. Okay, just for fun, I'll show you our fridge, because why not? I'm not organized, haven't looked in here. Got some stuff up there, pizza dough, broccoli, some grilled artichoke hearts from Trader Joe's that were left over, microgreens, half an avocado, um, some greens down here, some bananas that are about to be banana bread, leftovers from dinner, some blueberries, Chickpea miso, cashew butter. What is it? Oh, oatmeal. Our kids love cold oatmeal. And then I just have all my produce down here. I have my castor oil pack, just in case. Tummy, organic tummy soothers. Some eye drops. Some sundry tomatoes. Kalamata olives. Tahini leftover pots of sauce. Pickles. Lots of different kinds of pickles and sauerkraut. My sourdough starter. A little bit of sesame oil, coconut aminos, peanut butter, ketchup. Okay, do you really need this? I don't know if you even need this, but that's what's in our fridge. And this is what's in our freezer. A little bit of frozen stuff. Two different kinds of chocolate chips. Um, some moringa, spirulina, and omelet powder. A little bit more frozen stuff. French fries, ice, hamburger buns, acai, frozen bananas. There you go. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you got value from it, if you don't mind giving this video a thumbs up, it really helps my channel grow. And if you wanna see more videos about minimalism and slow living, I post new ones every Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe.